Okay, this is going to be a free form surfing the matrix of consciousness and time. I'm doing this on a Saturday afternoon, uh, live, unedited in my condominium with the windows open and we will expect some noise pollution. You will probably hear a rooster crow at some point. Um, loud mufflers going by a couple of times, um, airplane or loud muffler noise, and we may hear a siren. I'm only 45% certain on forecasting the siren today, so we'll listen for those sounds. Being aware of your environment. Okay, one of the things I do for a living uh, that our company does is we forecast the future. And so we look ahead. And I'm gonna just kinda do a little freeform idea of something that I've been looking at is these two guys uh, conferring, this guy's pointing at this, making a suggestion, they're young computer guys. There's another one over here He's more remote, but he's working on the same project. They confer a lot. And this is blockchain technology. This is a token and smart contract that does a number of really interesting things. What does it do? What's the point of it? For those of you that understand cryptocurrency and blockchain, it's so much more than just money transferring uh, value across things. It's going to be the, the underpinning, the foundation, the structure of our entire world. So what I'm seeing right here and what I'm talking about right here is over the horizon. Now, this could be complete blather, complete um, horseshit that I'm just pulling out of my butt. It could be partially true based on uh, things I know and misinterpreted, or it could be something that you might want to take this video, uh, put it on a blockchain, and go back and look at this a few years from now. How many years? Uh, you know, 2026, sometime around there or after. What I'm looking at I hear a siren in the distance, not even three minutes into it. Okay, it just went by. We'll have another one. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, putting this on the blockchain, uh, looking at this ahead to see if any of this comes true. Like, oh, yeah, um, I, was, I wanted to mention the Great Reset and the Great Rebuild. So we're in the Great Reset right now, where everything is breaking down, everything is being torn apart, we're losing faith in all structures, all institutions, all political systems, everything is just going haywire, and it's the, the reset. And out of that will come the rebuild. And part of this is the Great Rebuild. Okay. So they've got this blockchain, and what are the words that come to me? Patent, single use, uh, permission, staking, royalties, data collection, data management, resource management. So they're creating a computer code that's going to be a token that is going to be involved with manufacturing, okay? So let's talk about manufacturing today the old the old 20th century model which is highly inefficient let's say that I need a, a part for my Nissan Murano I have uh, the little the little thing that I need need to replace like it's a door handle okay and it breaks off and I call the Nissan dealer and I say, I need a handle for a 2016 Nissan Murano. And they look and they say, no, nope, don't have any of those in stock. Don't know when we might get any of those. The supply chain's a little bit backed up. So call around to auto parts stores and they get on the computer. They say, yeah, the, the little handle for the Nissan Murano. Sorry about that. So what has to happen is 
over in China, there's a factory and there are, they have some equipment and they have some laborers who they, they pay very well, not slave labor. It's a very, very good job for them. I would say manpower, but that's not politically correct. They also um, employ women as slave, laborers in China, as slave laborers in China. But they need to make this little thing. So how does that get from there to stuck on my car? Well, they need to bring in raw materials from across China and maybe around the world. That's all got to be shipped in, and the raw materials are brought to the factory. And they have a manufacturing process where I don't know if it's presses or lathes or um, you know molds or stamping, uh, manufacturing terms. So they're they're making this thing. So they they make them, and then those have got to be put on they got to be bundled up and put on pallets. So we have a bunch of pallets that the door handles in. Then a forklift has got to come by and use some type of fuel to lift this up and take it over to another place, the warehouse and distribution point. And then it's put in some uh, other pallets and then it is taken to a place where it's loaded on containers at a port and it's put on a giant container ship. And that container ship has got to sail the, the oceans to bring that to probably a port in Oakland or Long Beach. And if it's going the other way around and one of the container ships gets stuck in the Suez Canal, the whole thing breaks down and we, we have a big mess. So all these steps and then it gets comes to port and you have to have stevedores with those big cranes and they lift the they lift the container off and then someone's got to open the container and then they've got to take the pallets out with a little forklift and then that's got to go to a distribution site that goes ultimately to like FedEx or Amazon a distribution center a warehouse and so the order comes in like we need the handle for this Murano so then it gets shipped either by air, land or sea to Hawaii, it's going to be uh, by sea or by air, and then it, it comes to a place where it's unpacked and they give it to me, I can finally put it on my car. What a cumbersome, antiquated, inefficient uh, supply chain. So what these guys are working on is the idea and the software behind the manufacturing of the future where we will see I, I didn't see this real clearly but um, it's connected to uh, sensors and computer stuff and computer code and then raw material is fed in here. This is like a 3D printer. And so manufacturing in the future, in a few years, is going to be done on site locally. It won't be done in China and then shipped around the world. You will want it near metropolitan areas where all you have to have is the raw material and the code for the 3D printer. So, and the assembly of this, I feel that there will be breakthroughs in nanotechnology so they can build things like from the atom up or the molecule up. So you'll just need the very barest of raw materials stockpiled on the site close to where you live. And then this code I wrote block and oh, that whole thing. block chain. Pardon me. Like I said, this is all live freeform. I'm making this up as I go along. I'm half remote viewing, half just freebasing the matrix. But so there's a blockchain code that somebody owns the patent for this thing you wanna you wanna make. So you will 
tokenize, you'll buy credits in this token and this is where the patent, the permission, the single use license, the multiple use license uh, franchising is all part of the token that's tokenized and monetized. So what you do is you've bought a single use to make this thing and that is transmitted to the computer center, the brain of this thing, the raw materials comes in and it just and out pops the handle for my Murano and you didn't need to ship it from China. You didn't need to put it on pallets. You didn't need to put it on a container ship. It didn't need to be stored anywhere. Um, but the key to this is the blockchain code. Uh, they'll say, okay, we want a single use license, it'll cost so much. Or maybe you run an auto parts store and you say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, a lot of those handles break, they do, by the way. Nissan makes the worst car handles. Uh, so I need to make a dozen of these, 12. So you get a license use and you spit out uh, 12 of them and it's all, it's all local. When we really get into the new blockchain future, what they will embed on this is, this is the mechanism to let me gain entry to my car. And there will be a form of bio-authentication where I could put my thumbnail or um, my, yeah, my thumbprint, my thumbnail, my thumbprint, or I could authenticate my wife. She could also use the car, but no one else could gain entry to the car uh, without that. Or you could have um, retinal scan, facial recognition, so you walk up to your car and pull your mask down. 2026, you poor saps will probably still be wearing masks. So anyway, your car recognizes your face and it opens up and says, Mr. Allgaier, uh, where are you going? And it it bio-authenticates you. But the, so the key is everything manufactured on site using computer code to program the 3D printers using nanotechnology. So we don't have these long supply chains. We don't have so many container ships. You're just going to need to move the raw materials around. And the raw materials will be pretty basic if you have the sufficient level of nanotechnology to reassemble atoms into whatever it is you need to, to spit out here. So that's a part of the future that I see. Uh, a couple other ideas are coming to me. Those of you who have cryptos now are going to be very well off. If you have cryptos, you're going to have a very comfortable future because you'll have money. The rest of the people that are relying on their 401k, their pension from a company, social security, money they've stored up in the bank, stocks, that's going to take a major hit at some point and if you thought you had a nice pension, you'll be on universal basic income, but that's a whole other story. But let's say you want a really nice piece of sushi. This is, here's a, in Hawaii, they call tuna ahi, A-H-I, which means fire. It's red. In the future, how are you gonna, how are you gonna get your sushi? Staking and liquidity pools are going to be a foundation of the new financial system and we're in the transition to the financial system right now. I'm staking a number of uh, Cardano, Tezos, a whole lot of BAO. I've got BAO liquidity pools and they, you're allowing the new financial system to use your capital to assemble the new financial system that we're going into and those who aren't paying attention are just going to be left in the dust going what the hell I've got to live on this little bit of universal basic income stable coin 
Where is all my money? Okay. So those of you who have some wealth and you want to eat sushi in the future, you will put some of your tokens in a staking pool that will fund let's say there's a guy that needs to get a, a fishing boat like uh, you know deadliest catch but he's gonna he's gonna be a tuna long liner so he's got the long lines out there and he's he's on the beautiful ocean and you've <clears throat> You have a smart contract with the, a smart contract that involves the entire supply chain. So you've staked some of your money, you've put some of your cryptos, and I hesitate to make a dollar sign, I could make a Satoshi, a couple, whatever the stable token is going to be, it's not going to be pegged to the dollar. By the way, have you heard that 50% um, of world trade is no longer pegged to the U.S. dollar? China and Russia may, came to an agreement when their foreign ministers met last month and they stated, got to stop using the dollar. That's a, that's a bad plan. We've been doing that for about a century. Let's move on. And the European Union said, great idea, China and Russia. We're on board with that. India and Vietnam were watching. And those of you who think it's okay to just print $4 trillion, hey, let's print another $2 trillion because the world will accept that and help defer the debt and help um, cover the inflation. That's going away. So you're going to see hyperinflation in America. So back to our story. You've staked some of your tokens, some of your value to get this supply chain going that's going to allow you to go eat sushi. So the boat will need to be constructed. There will be costs for that. And the boat will need permits. It will need uh, like proof of insurance, workers' comp. It will have um, carbon credits that will cost some money. Like how much fuel is this thing going to use? Bup, 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 bup. Um, it will have permission, access permission, like, okay, this boat will be allowed to fish between a certain latitude and longitude, a certain area of the ocean, and, and we're overfishing the ocean, so you'll have a quota of, of how, much, how much tuna you can catch. Quota. Hard to spell at the whiteboard in the state. So, so all these things are going to be tied into the smart contract that will allow this guy to go out and fish and catch some ahi. And the, where he fished, when he fished, how much fuel he used, um, how diverse was his crew, all of that will be recorded on the blockchain that will be part of the um, the record of this piece of tuna that you're going to eat. Now, in Hawaii, there, there have been some scandals because um, people catch tuna in the Philippines and it goes rotten. And they found that if they pump carbon monoxide into the spoiled fish, it turns bright red. Uh, one of my friends went to a local big box store and they had a counter with some raw tuna and he ate it and came home to my house and became deathly ill because he ate ahi that was uh, spoiled and then they put carbon dioxide on it and it carbon monoxide and it brightens it up but you don't want that you want sustainably fished fresh ahi so this will have an immutable record on the blockchain of how much fuel was used to get this. Was it done sustainably? Was it uh, caught at the proper location? Was the crew diverse enough? Did they uh, go past their quota? So now it's brought to shore and you have a map of Oahu here. And here's Greater Honolulu. Well, here will be a region, a little, a little place. 
where me as a wealthy owner of cryptocurrencies, I will have access to that. My car, my Nissan Murano that recognizes me, because I've staked this chain and I have a stake in it, and I'm a good citizen and I have a good social credit score, my car will be allowed to drive, and it won't, it won't be a Murano, by the way, it's going to be a Mercedes, but um, I will be allowed to drive from my beautiful home up here on the high ridge, and it, I'll be able to go to that restaurant, and the ahi will be waiting for me because I put that order in, you know, like, how much ahi do I want to eat next month? Like, I'll eat it um, every other Tuesday. And so they send the fishing boat out and they already have the order. And my car will be allowed. If you don't have the social credit or the standing or the access, um, you won't be permitted into this zone because this zone will just be for rich people. So, did I say we'd hear a siren? Do you hear that? And an airplane. There we have it. I said there would be an airplane and a siren, and you can hear it. Okay, I must be psychic. Where was I? Access management. Travel. Everything is going to be regulated on the blockchain. Everything is going to be about your social credit score, how much money you have, um, what staking you have in things. It's going to be a very different world. A very very different world so those are some of my thoughts um, with the sirens and the airplane sound I can sign off to hear more about the world of the future this is a freebie for YouTube and the home office is going to say dick you should have put that up for our subscribers but I wanted to just give this one out for YouTube to hear more, you can go to our Patreon site, patreon.com slash crypto viewing, and we have a private site. We have really interesting interviews and conversations with people who are knowledgeable about how all this is being rolled out, and also our remote viewing projects. We have been doing future forecasting for over three years now, and we've been extremely accurate. We have subscribers who write to us and say, hey, I used, I bought the tokens that you guys did remote viewings on and I made $1.4 million. True story. So, world of the future. It's going to be an interesting place with the reset that we're going through now and then the rebuild where everything is going to be tokenized on the blockchain. Yes, even you, you're going to be part of the Internet of Things. It's going to be a fun world. Aloha.